Good morning, you guys. How are you? I haven't done a vlog in so long and I feel like vlogs make me feel human again. I know that sounds weird, but I feel like, I don't know. There's something about them, just documenting your day, being able to be yourself and feeling like I'm talking to my friends. It's like kind of a form of self-care for me, but I obviously do other types of videos. So it's nice to do a vlog again. I am, well, I just woke up and the air quality has been so bad in California that I haven't been outside in, I think, three or four days. So feeling very cooped up, lots going on in life. My allergies are kind of going nuts, but I want to go outside. We checked the air quality. It's the first day. It's finally like okay to be outside. They say still be careful, but still okay to go on walks or a run. So I think I'm going to do that, even though it, it looks slightly concerning. It's definitely not ideal, but also not healthy to be inside for four days. So I'm going to go on a run for my mental health. And a question I get often is, if you are somebody who works out in the morning or midday, how should you do your skincare routine? Skip the rinse. The rinse is actually more dehydrating than cleansing if you're using a gentle cleanser that has emollient properties and humectants. Splashing with water is just going to be straight up dehydration, pulling moisture out of your skin through the process called transepidermal water loss, you will be losing water. So skip the rinse. Renee Rouleau has a great article on her blog about why you should not just splash your face in the morning and just skip that part. Instead, I am just going to go into applying my sunscreen. That is going to be it for what I do this morning. And then when I come back from my run, from my workout, I will do a full cleanse and I will get into all of my skincare so that way you don't waste anything, you're not dehydrating your skin, but absolutely want to put on sunscreen in the morning. I'm using my favorite sunscreen. It is the Elta MD UV Clear. I love it for all skin types, especially if you are acne and breakout prone, this is a great one for you. It is a mineral SPF, SPF 46, and I would say it does have like a little bit of a matte finish. The tinted version, I would say, is a little bit more glowy. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to go for my run, and I will check in with you guys afterwards. Okay, I'm still here, guys. I'm putting on my shoes. Hat, workout essential. Just make sure you really cleanse underneath the hat after the workout. That is, I would say, like another big complaint I hear often from people. They complain of like a bumpy texture on their forehead. A lot of times it's hair product, it can even be laundry detergent, but I think hats can really be to blame. It's the same thing that causes face or mask acne. It's acne mechanica. It's that friction and rubbing with a fabric, plus the heat underneath can create those little bumps. Usually salicylic and benzoyl peroxide are my favorites to treat those, but usually it requires a little bit more exfoliation to get rid of the little bumpies. Okay, I got my shoes on. I'm nervous. I wish you guys could hype me up in real life for this <laughs> workout. Does anybody else get that feeling of just like you overthink it when you haven't done it a while? Some days I'm like so, so up for it and some days you really have to um, push yourself out the door. I say motivation comes and goes and discipline is more important. Doing things when they're hard and not always exciting and enjoyable. I always feel so much better after a little walk though or 
just getting fresh air, getting some movement and steps in, I always feel a lot better. So honestly, woke up a little bit. I don't know. There is so much going on in my life, which I will get into. We'll have a little sit down chat um, in this video. Lots of updates, but I think my head has just been a little bit cloudy and definitely that time of the month. So <laughs> we're just feeling... We're feeling that change is coming, I think, and it is going to be a good thing, but lots to unpack, so we will catch up. I'm going to go on this jog, stop procrastinating, come back, and then I'll make a little something and shower. That's always the best feeling, having a meal after a workout and having a shower. Hi guys, so I am fresh out of the shower and I wanted to give you a little morning routine. So first, I wanted to show you this little hack of mine, which is icing. And I actually have, I know this looks bad. It's, I think it's actually from this necklace, which is new. Either that or stress, I'm not quite sure, but this necklace is new. It is from Goriana. I love the brand. I don't know if I'm just having some reaction with it, but one of my favorite tricks for irritation, inflammation, acne, breakout is ice. So I will typically apply this like on a breakout and hold it there. But sometimes I just like to sort of wake up my skin with it. I avoid my little capillaries that are sensitive on my cheeks since those can get they call it distended they're not broken but they can be damaged and get a little bit red from too extreme of temperature so if you have rosacea prone or like cuprose or tail injectasia type of skin tread lightly but for sort of common irritation, this is one of my favorite things to do. I like to put the ice underneath my eye. Cold is just great for inflammation and calming the skin. So that's what we're doing. I go in with my toner and I have something new here that was a gift from Derma Plus. I'm so excited to use these. They are little reusable cotton rounds. So gosh they're so cute I'm gonna try them for the first time and I'm going to apply my hydrating toner on the little pad oh this is so nice so nice save yourself some money save the planet save the turtles works just as well if not better and I would say these are sort of single use use them and then throw them in the wash i love these toning you guys i think toning is actually one of my favorite aspects of skincare ignore my redneck i'm going to cover it up one of my favorite aspects of skincare because it's all about ph ph is so underrated it's not something you see a ton of products talking about if they're ph balanced or not but toner is incredible because the pH of water can really vary. So it's important to tone your skin before going in the rest of your routine so the skin is nice and balanced. Balanced pH is really the key. If you're struggling with breakout or inflammation sensitized skin, consider pH and consider using a very gentle, hydrating, non-alcohol, non-stripping, type of toner so this adds just like a nice drink of water to my skin it has hyaluronic acid and aloe so it's going to bind water to the skin and allow my other ingredients to penetrate more effectively and hold those water molecules to the skin okay that's that also got this new little hairbrush I am loving. It is by Tangle Teaser, I think. Yeah, Tangle Teaser. It's sort of like their version of the wet brush, but isn't it cute? I think it's 
very nice. It feels very good on the scalp. Okay, so lately, let's take these three out. Lately, I have been sort of doing a little cocktail with my serums. Guys, I'm so embarrassed about my neck. <laughs> It looks way worse on camera too. Um, I'm gonna do a little cocktail of serums starting with hyaluronic acid. This is by SkinCeuticals. It's the Hydrating B5 Gel. I like it okay. It's definitely a good quality hyaluronic, but I think I prefer Replenix, which makes a really pretty blue formula. I think I prefer them to that one. But I had a gift card and I wanted to reperch my new hyaluronic. So that is the first one I do, and I do it on damp skin always. If you are applying your hyaluronic on dry skin, it's going to have the opposite effect. You might notice your skin feels more dry. It's going to pull moisture out of the skin. Okay, so that's on. It feels like a nice little tacky texture. Then I am going in with my vitamin C. Feels so good to talk to you guys. Honestly, I miss you so much. Love you, thank you for being you, never change. Um, this is the Obagi Professional C, 20% L-ascorbic acid. Vitamin C will probably never change for me for, I mean, for at least the foreseeable future. It is, again, a 20% L-ascorbic acid, which is kind of like, the big guns of vitamin C. It's something I've worked my way up to. It is not something I would like watch this video and go buy it just because you see I, you see me using it. It's something you gotta work your way up to and I wish that was something that was more understood with vitamin C because I think people will have a bad experience with it. They'll feel like they break out from it and then they never want to use it again. Whereas I think vitamin C can and should be used by nearly everybody. There's probably some small circumstances where it might not work out, but there are different derivatives of vitamin C. There are non-acid vitamin Cs. There are different strengths. There's different delivery systems. So there are other vitamin C's that are just as effective, but more of a like slow release sort of buffered formula. So C-Plex by Derma Plus is a fantastic one. That one has magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. So you could look for that type of derivative of vitamin C if you have sensitive skin, rosacea prone skin, breakout prone skin, you're a beginner to vitamin C, ease your way into it, then maybe go up to a 10% L-ascorbic acid, then a 15, eventually maybe you'll get to a 20%. Even, even said, this is more for like normal, oily, very strong skin types. So people who have a good balanced routine, their skin isn't particularly weak or reactive. Okay, so that's serum number two. And then number three is the SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense. This one is fantastic. It was recommended by my dermatologist, whose name is Dr. Austin. She is based in San Francisco. She is absolutely amazing, incredible. Maybe I can get her on the podcast one day. Um, she's fantastic. She's really known for her results and a very conservative approach to her what she does which is Botox, filler, lasers, different types of injectables but she also diagnoses skin conditions and concerns so she was who I went to when I was struggling with my melasma and I've known her for a couple couple years now. Even before I started working at Derma Plus, I saw her. My skin was really red back then. Like, I don't know if it was from trying all the new treatments in school. I'm sure it was. And I had started to develop acne at that point in my life. And my skin was just breakouts all along the cheek and the jawline 
and it was very red. I'm sure my barrier was compromised and yeah, I was just kind of a mess. Um, and I, I think the only thing I used to see her for was actually Botox. She's great with Botox, very conservative, but always looks great. And so I recently went to see her for my melasma and she recommended, sorry, I got so off topic. She recommended this, the SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense. It has niacinamide and kojic acid, which is a fantastic brightener. Vitamin C is also a great um, antioxidant and great for melasma, but pairing these two together, which you can actually use these ingredients, the niacinamide, kojic acid, you can use those with the vitamin C, as long as you're okay with this type of vitamin C. Um, but you can use vitamin C and this type of serum together for more intense lightening and brightening. My melasma definitely, I can see, looks a lot better. And I've also seen Dr. Austin for microneedling. I've done two sessions and I would say the results are subtle. Like I enjoy it and I notice, I'd say I had 15% difference in my skin if I'm being honest. Um, she, her nurse uses the pen and they do a fantastic job. It's not the type of treatment that is supposed to be like an overnight miracle. It's something where you, most people require five sessions or so if they have, you know, a lot of texture in their skin or trauma, definitely more, but it's something that I would say is like a maintenance thing you could do for a little collagen boost, maybe like a couple times a year just for, you know, sort of gradual results and more so if you wanted more obvious results. Okay, those are my serums. And next I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer. This is the SkinCeuticals Daily Moisturizer. It's a lightweight pore minimizing moisturizer for normal to oily skin. I wish the ingredients were on here so I could talk about that. Um, honestly, I think, again, I had a gift card to um, the store, so I bought a couple things. Um, I think it's okay. My favorite moisturizer would still be Derma Plus. Hands down, I think SkinCeuticals is great sometimes people ask about it um it's great it's also very pricey um see the texture of this moisturizer is just like it feels like it sits on the surface of the skin um i don't know i prefer the dermal plus one but SkinCeuticals is, the reason it's so expensive is they are one of the most clinically trialed, most researched brands, um, especially their CE Ferulic. The reason that serum is so expensive is there's so much clinical research behind it and testing. To me, that is important because it shows a product is efficacious and it shows that you're not totally pouring your money down the sink. That's why a big reason I prefer professional products. There is, you know, research and results to prove these products have an effect on the skin before they are allowed to be released to the market, whereas over-the-counter brands are not held to the same standard. So sometimes you can find some gems, but it's definitely more of a gamble. Um, the CE Ferulic, I think, yeah, it's great, but if you are breakout prone or acne prone, it would not be my um, first choice. I would say you're better off with the Obagi. And I, I don't know, I have sort of mixed feelings about vitamin E, which is the stabilizer in that vitamin C. I think for some, it can be no problem. Like the comedogenic scale is it's a scale. It's, it can't be applied to each person the same way. So for some people that serum can be totally okay. And it is very stable because vitamin E is a great stabilizer with the ferulic. Um, but it just could cause a little bit of clogging in the skin if you're already prone to that. So yeah, that is my moisturizer. 
going to go in with a little Neopa eye cream. I was unable to place my Derma Plus order, so I ordered some of this new stuff. And honestly, I feel like nothing compares. It really doesn't. The thing is with skincare, like, sometimes you can find a great professional brand like SkinCeuticals. But you can also find another professional brand that you like just as much, works just as well. And it, professional grade skincare doesn't have to be super expensive over the top. That is not the, the way to judge if something is good. SkinCeuticals happens to be amazing, but it's also very pricey. So if you can afford it, you're probably going to have great skin using it. For me, it's something... I enjoy trying things from their line um, here and there. I feel like I need a change of pace. I'm going to put on my sunscreen. I have also been making a little cocktail with my SPF. So this is the Ulta UV Clear, the one I used before the workout. Then, and I know this is a lot of steps. This is just what I do, not what you should necessarily do. This is the All Calm Color Science clinical redness corrector SPF 50 I'm just putting a little bit of that in my hand and then lastly to sort of offset the color signs it has like a little bit of a funny tint to it like I really enjoy it but I add in the drunk elephant de-bronzy anti-pollution sunshine drops and then I mix this together I really love the Drunk Elephant bronzing drops. I think they're gorge and they give you such a nice glow. You can definitely overdo it. I kind of got roasted on TikTok, you guys, <laughs> because I, I love those bronzing drops, but I applied them. I'm very fair, obviously. I applied them over my foundation in a video talking about foundation and um i had never really used it before so i didn't know they're pretty potent if you're not diluting it with moisturizer so i just sort of um like applied it like normal bronzer and blended it in with a brush and apparently it didn't match my skin tone and i got a bunch of nice comments telling me my face didn't match my neck oh gosh TikTok is a beast. Like, I love it. It's so fun to use and watch videos on there. But people are brutal. Like, it really makes me appreciate YouTube and Instagram because I feel like those are such, such a close, intimate group of people. Like, when I'm filming these videos, I feel like I know exactly who I'm talking to. Like, I know for the most part who's watching it um and I know you guys it feels like I know you on some level and I'm talking to my friends but man TikTok it exposes you to more people so uh, more people but people who aren't who haven't been invested in you since the beginning so those are my feelings getting a thicker skin every day with every TikTok that is it for my morning routine probably seemed a little complicated but in the moment it is fast for me and i have not made a smoothie in months which is crazy for me it used to be an everyday thing i don't know what happened i've more so just been craving like pumpkin banana bread or bananas with peanut butter like warm cozy dessert type of things but i want to get back on the horse on the smoothie train so i'm going to make a smoothie and I want to show you guys this special fall skin coffee drink I've been making. So let's go make that. It's super good. As class is in session, I'm going to show you how to make my special iced coffee co pumpkin cold foam situation. So kind of a healthier version of the Starbucks one. And if you want the Starbucks one, fantastic. Go get it. Treat yourself. I'm sure I will at some point. It's just a fun thing. But this is a way to save money, a way to have the treat 
without breaking the bank and having a little bit of a healthier version without refined sugars and with true pumpkin. There's like actual pumpkin in this that has so many benefits for the skin. It has vitamins A, C, and E, which help combat sun damage and very anti-aging as well. Pumpkin also has zinc which, zinc, which is great for calming inflammation, combating redness, good for acne. So there's not a ton of this. It's not going to be like a miracle drink. There's no miracle tea to cure your acne or coffee drink that's going to cure your acne, but it's just kind of like a fun thing. And it does have some benefits and certainly healthier than what you would get at Starbucks. So here's what you will need. One cup of coffee. Coffee. I do a vanilla one in my Nespresso and I put it in the fridge overnight. If you like hot coffee, you could have that. I only like cold coffee. I don't know. Um, that's just me. And then you are going to need some form of milk. I prefer a dairy-free version or a dairy-free creamer. I'm using the Nut Pods Hazelnut Creamer. And then one can of pumpkin. This is from Trader Joe's. I've gotten so much use out of this one can. I've made pumpkin banana bread. I've been making my iced coffee. So must have, like need to go get five more cans. Then you will need some form of pumpkin pie spice. Cinnamon tastes good too. This is just more pumpkin-y because I really like pumpkin. And then Last thing is this little frother, which you can get these on Amazon. I can link mine below. They're very inexpensive. I might want to invest in like a more quality one because I feel like these, I don't know, have a short lifespan. But one of those to froth your cream and then one cup of ice. So I'm going to start, let's rearrange, get our setting clean. I am going to start with making the cold foam. So you will take one cup. You'll also just need a regular cup. You're going to take your creamer and I'm going to take this thing off. Okay. Pour in as much creamer as you want. I kind of like a good amount. So there we go. Then I'm going to take a couple teaspoons of the pumpkin and just pop it in the creamer. I know it kind of sounds weird, but I swear it's amazing. I'm going to do two and a half teaspoons and finish what is in this jar. I like it very pumpkin-y. If you aren't really a pumpkin person, you could just do one teaspoon. But, you know, I'm feeling the fall vibes. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. I could never have a cooking channel. <laughs> okay, you also will need some form of sweetener. I prefer something like stevia. This is a really interesting type of sugar. It's called Swerve. You can get it at Whole Foods or I'm sure more natural grocery stores, but it's similar to stevia. No sugar. It tastes, I would say, almost exactly like brown sugar. And it has like kind of a unique sticky consistency. It kind of smells like maple syrup, um, but I really like it. It's great for baking, which I love to bake. So this is nice to have on hand. Um, I would say it's not super potent. So whereas with stevia, you would probably do like one teaspoon. I like to do like two or three, an orange color to it. Then you're gonna take your foamer, let it do its thing. And this is just going to sort of simulate the cold foam that you would get at Starbucks. Blend, 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 blend for a little bit, like a minute or two to get it super foamy and thick. I also love making whipped coffees with this little tool, so I love having it in my kitchen. 
if you don't want necessarily like foam you just want like an iced coffee with milk you don't have to blend it as long but blending it longer will get it more foamy all right guys we did it i got a little impatient i could have blended it longer but i really want my coffee so next you're going to take your cup of ice and your cup of iced coffee pour the coffee over ice and if this looks like a lot of coffee it's because it is i have an issue and i've been cutting back luckily this is half decaf half vanilla coffee but that is something i'm working on but i just i really love coffee and it does have some beneficial antioxidants for the skin so it's it's not all bad. Okay, next we're going to take our cold foam and then you're going to add a little bit of pumpkin spice. Okay, the cold foam is kind of blending in. It looks more like a latte. I'm still perfecting the craft of this pumpkin iced coffee, but that is it. Let me know if you guys try it and enjoy. I'm so excited. A million out of 10. It's perfect. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but toot toot is a so it is a little bit later now. I have been attempting to do work at my desk, which sort of just led to an Instagram rabbit hole. Tip, put your phone away in a drawer if you need to get things done. It's tough, especially when I think a lot of you estheticians can relate you, when you have like a business account on Instagram and you do need to post but it's easy to just get caught up checking and responding to every comment in the moment. I think it's way better to just put your phone away and maybe check Instagram at certain points throughout the day or at the end of the day and just sort of do like time batching and respond to everything in clumps. Otherwise, it can easily take up your whole day. Okay, I decided on a little strawberry and raspberry smoothie. Berries are great, great option for smoothies as the base because they're low sugar, full of antioxidants, lots of vitamins and minerals. So they're a great option for smoothies. And yeah, flavor wise, raspberries are one of my favorites. I love raspberries and I'm gonna sort of finish up the rest of these strawberries. I'm gonna throw this in. Also going to add in some ice. Some spinach of course and then I need to finish the rest of this vanilla protein shake so I think I'm going to use this as sort of my liquid and get a little bit of protein in there if you want to add some healthy fats like peanut butter or almond butter that is wonderful and it will keep you sati satiated a little bit longer Here is the smoothie. It looks gorge. So excited for her. Miss her. Don't know why I ever stopped drinking her. Mm. Oh. I'm gonna get a spoon. This is messy. All right, here we go. Question I get sometimes is how do you get more of a thick consistency where it's more like a smoothie bowl? And the answer is more ice, less liquid. You can sort of add more liquid as you go, but try to blend it first with just a couple inches of the liquid and you can always 
add more in later, but one of my pet peeves is when the smoothie is like liquidy. I feel like it's just not as good. Okay, here's a bunch of toppings just to make it, I don't know where to put this, to make it a little bit more fun. I know sometimes you guys are interested in like the food videos, what I eat in a day, how to like get started with eating more whole foods, which I would say is my mentality. Um, and I think smoothies are a great place to start if you're not used to making food at home or really, you know, focusing on eating foods that will benefit you long term. I think a smoothie is a great place to start. And something that I think is important to realize is there are no, like, there are no bad foods. I think a better way to look at food and approach wellness and eating better for the long term is to think of every food as having a value. Every food has value. If you want to get ice cream with your friends on the weekend, if you want to have pizza, if you want to go to a restaurant and indulge in your favorite dish, that food has value. In the moment, it is fun for you. It's a social thing. It's a part of life that can be very enjoyable to indulge in those types of foods. Now, foods like a smoothie that has berries with antioxidants, that has vegetables, that has good fats, that has protein, you know, those have value for your body as well. So it just depends if you are somebody who struggles with eating decisions like think about what feels good for you in the moment i'm somebody who having such a long complicated health journey i felt like my diet was has been under a microscope for years like since i was 14 years old i've had people looking at my diet trying to help me you know improve improve my health and my immune system dealing with chronic illness and autoimmune diseases I've had a lot of people say diet is the most important thing. We need to look at it. We need to evaluate your meals on a daily basis. Since I was 14 years old, that's a lot of pressure for a young person. And I think it led me to believe if I ate something unhealthy or bad, I was compromising my wellness in the long term. Now, I think there's people who, you know, have allergies and have a different level of restriction but I don't think restriction is healthy at all and I think that is more damaging for a young girl to develop that type of relationship with food because it's very difficult to break the cycle of what goes on your head it's not impossible but it, when you get into a pattern and you develop certain thoughts related to food I think that is so much more damaging so Think about what feels good to you in the moment and if you can focus on eating more whole foods, I think that's a great place to start with fitness. I think there's so much information out there. It gets overwhelming and especially for a fitness beginner, I don't think you need to think about counting your macros and tracking your calories. I mean, you can if that's you want a basis to, as a starting point, but as a beginner, I don't think you need to do that because it affects your quality of life. I think we need to focus more on what is a sustainable approach long term. And I'm not a health coach, dietitian, so this is just me um, sort of talking about my experience with health and fitness and how it can be taken to an extreme that compromises your health. So, um, yeah, I think long term success and happiness is always going to be the most important thing. I added some unsweetened coconut shreds from Trader Joe's, delicious. Um, just a fun thing to add full of good fats to support good skin health. And I added some chia seeds. And I'm going to add some cacao in it. These taste like unsweetened chocolate meets espresso beans, I would say. 
very fun to eat as well. Sort of give you a little boost of energy. So I like these. And then lastly, some muesli. I really like this one from Trader Joe's. A lot of these granolas and things that are, you know, packaged foods, they can be full of sugars and other sneaky things. So I like this one. It does have, where is it? Pear juice concentrate, dried apples. So let's see five grams of sugars, but no added sugars. So I don't know, even sugar has value for your body. So everything in moderation, but it's something I like to be aware when I buy granola. I feel like it's one of those things that is just like thought of as healthy, but there can be a lot of sneaky things in there. So it's just good to pay attention to, but this is just a good source of carbs which I like to have, especially after a workout, and to make this more filling without the toppings. I feel like it's more of a snack. With the toppings, I feel like it's more of a meal for me. So again, that is for me, and you have to decide what works for you, what feels the best for you. All I want is happiness and for people to feel good and full of energy. So this is just a little what I eat for breakfast. Hi guys, well isn't this lighting not the best? It's okay. I just got back from a little walk, which was really nice. Again, have not been outside much the past like four days. So evening walks are something I love and that are so therapeutic. It's nice after working home all day and sitting at a desk to be able to decompress, look at some nice trees and flowers. So I really love my walks. I am going to be doing a little double cleanse situation and have something here this is my new face i had to send it in i had to send it back to them they were gracious enough to just send me a new one because mine was sort of like reacting slow it was a little bit weird but i have a new one and i'm excited to use it for the first time in a while so i thought i would do that with you guys while i sort of wind down for my nighttime routine i'm going to start with a cold washcloth and removing my SPF with a little bit of a cream cleanser and I use this one from image. It is the vital C hydrating facial cleanser Now something I think is important with cleansing is remembering to do 60 seconds for each cleanse Really being thorough. I think a lot of skin conditions can be avoided with a proper cleansing routine so you want to make sure you really get all areas of the face especially those that are more prone to congestion we produce more oil in this jawline area definitely in our t-zone and the forehead right here is like a big sort of area for me so i'm spending more time there the cheeks as well kind of break out there sometimes so just being really thorough and i'm going to apply the gel primer with the new face I think something some people don't realize is you can't just use any product with the new face. It won't react the same way and you won't get the same benefits of the microcurrent. And I'm doing this sort of in between cleanses. I'm going to cleanse my face when I hop in the shower. I'm a little bit sweaty from my walk, but I wanted to do this sort of in between so I could wash off the primer and then just finish with my normal skincare routine. I have mascara all over. Real cute. <laughs> It is from Dermaplus. 
And speaking of, have a little bit of an announcement that might come. Dylan just blew his nose in the shower. It's my pet peeve. I have an announcement for you guys. I'll just tell you casually while I'm doing my routine. Um, I don't ha know how to say this, but I have decided not to return to Derma Plus, sadly. I know, I know. Like, I never thought in a million years I would be saying this because I loved my job. Loved my job. But... Honestly, the pandemic, COVID, has changed a lot of things, and I think I'm in a very fortunate position to have a little bit of an audience to be so excited about what I'm doing, and to have people listening really means a lot, and I think I'm really excited about growing that future and that potential and possibly starting something of my own. So more to come on that. Um, but it is the end of one chapter at Dermal Plus. I had to put, I had to think about during this um, time of quarantine with having all of this time, I had to think about whether I was comfortable going back and I think it's something every esthetician has to decide on their own if they're comfortable, if they're in the position to be able to go back or to not go back. With me having my autoimmune disease, as you guys know, my health is very compromised. I really struggle with maintaining my wellness as it is. Um, so I don't know. I spent a lot of time thinking about it talking to my doctors, talking to a lot of family and friends, and I came to the decision on my own, but I decided I really have to put my health first is what it came down to. have to put my health first right now, and I absolutely loved being in the treatment room. I know a lot of you guys say you look up to me and you know, I might be the reason you are going to school or I inspire you on some level. And I love that. It makes me so happy. The only thing is I do not want anyone to ever do something just because I'm doing it. Everyone has to do what is best for them on an individual level. And I didn't want to let anyone down by not um, continuing in the treatment room. I think every esthetician, like, like I said, has to decide for themselves if they're comfortable working in a pandemic and everyone has to decide. Everyone has to decide what is best for them. It felt like some estheticians were so excited to go back. They weren't really phased. They weren't worried about their health. And for me, um, I was really nervous about it. I It was something I worked on with a, uh, with a therapist. It was something I worked on with a therapist. Um, I had a lot of anxiety about returning to the treatment room, to be honest, which is something I don't feel like I heard anyone talking about. So I really felt very alone in that. Um, and I don't want to scare anyone because everyone has their own decisions to make. Um, it really came down to being autoimmune compromised and not feeling comfortable. And... Also feeling like there were other opportunities on the horizon for me, um, which is a luxury. But I think aesthetics is a beautiful thing because it's not just working in the treatment room. I don't think... I kind of want to break the mold of people thinking you are limited to one thing. I see so many estheticians doing amazing things, whether it is education, cons consultations, consulting online, um, having retail sites, working in the treatment room, being speakers and educators. I think there's so many routes you can take with aesthetics 
and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the treatment room. So part of me was like, am I letting people down because I'm not doing what I used to be doing? And the answer is I just, I have to be true to myself. And really that's the message I want you guys to take away, not feeling like you have to follow somebody else's career trajectory, more so like at the heart of all of my messaging, I want you guys know, I want you to know it's okay to change your direction. It's okay to have a change of heart. What you need to do is follow your heart and be genuine to your own beliefs, what you feel comfortable with. And if that changes along the way, so be it. We evolve and I think that is a beautiful thing. So please let me know if you have any questions. I am here for you. If anything, I only want to be here for you more. So this is a change I think is going to be for the best. It's going to open up a lot of space for other opportunities, which I'm so thrilled about. And I had an absolutely incredible time at Derma Plus. I'm going to miss my clients so much. I really haven't even like told anyone. Um, it was a decision I came to that was, again, so, so difficult took months and months of thinking, but I came to an official decision yesterday. And um, yeah, I'm excited for what is ahead. I am here for you guys. I am continuing with the podcast, continuing with YouTube, and I will need ideas for things you guys want to see and hear about. So I hope you guys receive that message well. I love you so much. Please let me know again if you have any questions. This is not the end of my aesthetics career. It is simply a pivot. And I think all of us in this pandemic have to pivot a little bit in order to survive and evolve. It is a necessary part of survival and living your life to the fullest. So that's it. I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. That was my big announcement. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in the next video.